Hello, I'm Zash, and welcome to episode 25 of my G Senjo no Mao, or the Devil on G string. Let's read. Joining me, as always, is my co reader, Faith. Well, Kyosuke's doomed. Sabaki's family managed to come up with the 50 million yen, and their loan is no longer going to be foreclosed, and therefore they can keep their land. Which means Kyosuke's plan has failed. And Yakuza don't take failure that well. Though... I think Gonzo was trying to drive a point home by giving Kyosuke 50 million. And I honestly am worried for Kyosuke. He may not come out of this too well. Anyways, please enjoy this next chapter. Upon my entrance, the family mobbed me, as usual. Oni-chan, let's take a bath. Uh, hey kid, don't pull on my pants. You're so popular, kyosuke -kun. Yeah, they're just trying to tear the clothes right off me. Welcome back. Sabaki's mother said open-heartedly. Oh son, you really have become a part of this family. <laughs> yep, yep, it just feels right. Oh, really? Why don't you stay tonight? We'll stay up all night, and I'll tell you stories from my younger days. <sighs> ah, jeez. I may not look the top, but I used to be the Disco Ropengi's VIP. Ah. Damn, these people's always manage to throw me off. I I'm sorry, but there are things I need to attend to. Oh, come on. Two more is a day off anyway. Are we gonna take a bath or not? Kyosuke kun, didn't the weather report say it's gonna start hailing soon? Hmm. Actually, I think I remember seeing something about that. I'm sorry, I hope walking me home doesn't end up getting you caught in it. Oh, for crying out loud. If you ain't gonna stay no matter what, then do you want me to call you a taxi? No, I'll be fine. If you count the distance and transit time, it would likely cost over 10,000 yen. Don't worry about that. Honey, call a taxi. All right, I get it. I understand. Why do they have to be so caring? Yeah, it kind of makes it hard to kick them out of their home. The nerve. Yeah. I'll stay the night. Hooray! What do they believe about me that causes them to treat me this way? That you're Sabaki's that boyfriend? That you make their daughter happy. Yeah. Yeah, but you make their daughter happy. That's yeah. all they care about. No, it's just this is their nature. Maybe they treat everyone like this. What would they think if they found out I'm the person behind the misfortunes that have befallen them? I took a bath with Hiroaki-kun. Onichan washed me again. The kid doesn't seem to know hot from cold running around the room stark naked. Thanks, Kyosuke-kun. Now that you and Hiroaki have gotten acquainted, why not let Sabaki wash your back next time, Kyosuke-kun? Dad! <laughs> Dad went from zero to 100 right there. Uh, p please don't say something so embarrassing. Laughing, Sabaki's father left for the bathroom. Onet-chan, can I go and get ice cream? It looks like he's starting to ask for permission before doing something. Well then, do you want to go now? I'll come too. Are you sure? You aren't worried about the cold? Well, you certainly are. You aren't wearing pants yet. Did I just hear the hail start? The windows shook loudly from the oncoming wind. Too bad. I want to eat ice cream. Yeah, but that hail probably will bash your little skull in, so how about no? Hiroaki looks dejected. Ellipses. The convenience store isn't far. I'll jog over. I thought Sabaki would say that. I put a jacket on over my pajamas. Uh-huh. It's okay. How about you just stay here and play Othello, Kosuke-kun? Who am I supposed to play with? Let's just hurry. I took Sabaki's hand and pulled her outside. Onichan, thanks. 
He smiled from cheek to cheek. Just what am I doing? That night, I was drinking with Sabaki's father. In those days, you weren't a man if you didn't have a bike, you see. Is that right? Do you ride Kyosuke-kun? No, but I have a driver's license. That's great. The next time we go on a family trip, I'll be sure to call you. Yeah, driving can be a real handful. My cell rang. Ellipses. Hmm? What is it? You're not going to answer it? No, sir. I'm speaking with an elder right now. Damn it, son. Stop being so polite. Eh, uh, all right. I reluctantly left my seat. Quietly, in the kitchen, I took the call. It's me. Hmm? Yeah. Look, I realize government official scandals don't exactly grow on trees. Wait, stop right there. That deputy commissioner has a 16-year-old son, doesn't he? That's it. We got him. Use that to put on the pressure. I'm a real bastard? Yeah, well, you make do right. But the kid's problems is the parent's problem. If you don't like it, then don't have kids. That's what family is, isn't it? After finishing, I felt like my existence was tiny. Sure, let's get some dinner or something next time. I hung up. Kyosuke-kun, that wasn't another girl, was it? Of course not. Oh ho ho, but I heard ya. Let's have dinner next time, or something like that, wasn't it? It's a friend and a very important business partner. Whatever. Still, you seem like the type that would be really popular with girls. It's good that you've picked our sabaki. What about me? Oh, nothing. Done with your bath already? Sabaki suddenly appeared. Then Dad's going to go to sleep. The two of you just stay here and talk. He quickly retired to the bedroom. Yes, we will talk. Hmm. Did Dad say something weird again? You have an interesting father. Oh, thank goodness. Sabaki was staring at me without blinking. He smiles a lot these days. Really? You seem to be having fun when you come here. Is that just my imagination? Well, if you think so, then it's probably true. <laughs> yeah, thank goodness. A brilliant smile. You know, I've been trying to think up something I could do for you recently. I didn't understand what she was getting at. I gave her an ambiguous shake of my head. But, Kyosuke-kun, what do you do for someone who can already do everything himself? That's not the case. But you live in such a luxurious place, and you have so much money. I'm nothing special. The special people are those from my father's company. Some of what they've earned has just trickled down to me. That's all. I really do believe that. What about the time you came and saved me when I was in trouble? I saved her? Maybe it seemed that way from her perspective. Look, just don't overestimate me so much. Is that what you think? I think you just don't realize how great you are. She happily inched over to me again. You can tell me to do anything. You want to help me this much? Then... Then... I can't tell her to move out. Maybe, uh... Maybe you should come and live with me. Oopsies. Her face flushed red in a flash. And your family should move into a house that's easier to live in. I mean, feel the draft right here. As I said it, I knew that it had little effect. Thank you. It's thought that can. Yeah, but he's not thinking of you. He is thinking of not getting shot yeah, in the head. Yeah, that's the unfortunate bit. That's what I thought. I tried to think up of a reason for them to move out on the spot, but I couldn't come up with one. I knew it. Something's troubling you, isn't it? She's sharp, noticing my confusion like that. Can I ask you a trite question? Sure. 
What's more important, your family or your lover? <laughs> that really is a trite question. Believing I was joking, Sabaki laughed. That's hard. What about you, Kesvikin? I couldn't tell you. How about life or money? Most people would say no amount of money can replace a life. What about you? Life is more important than money, of course. Hmm? I think I've been asked that question before. Mao. Tsubaki tilted her head. Oh, well. Family or lover, in the end. She stole a glance at me, then lowered her head, embarrassed. I, I, I don't know. I'd have to figure it out when it happened. That time is drawing near, Subaki. I'll try my damnedest to convince your family that they should leave their home behind. Surely, this will be my best chance. Still, I can't seem to find my resolve. I'm hesitant to destroy a happy family like this. Oh, Nechan, I gotta pee. Oh, geez. Hiroki rubbed his eyes and grabbed for his sister's hand. Sabaki gently held Hiroaki's tiny palm. Ellipses. I watched the two of them absent-mindedly. Watching this warm scene, I felt peace, and I felt jealousy. Ellipses. 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 Megalipses. Mom! Mom! I got a croquette from the school's leftovers. Really? You should eat it, Kyosuke. Aren't you hungry? Nah, I already had lots and lots. I got it from the guy who sits beside me. We even fought for it. I think I've had it with croquettes for a while. No wonder your face is puffy. Yeah. I'm good at fighting. If I just tell someone to hand over some meat, Everyone will be scared and give it to me. You mustn't bully the weak. I'm not going to do that. I'm everyone's leader. Really? Look, remember the bruise I had a little bit ago? I got that from rescuing a classmate from a bully in one of the higher grades. You're not hungry? Nuh-uh. Really? But your stomach seems to be saying it hasn't had enough. That's my belly saying thank you. Yeah, that's right. Because I ate a lot. Don't worry about your mother, Kyosuke. You're growing right now, so you need to eat a lot. Ellipses. Megalipses. I've been a liar for a long time. My transparent lies were always seen through by my gentle mother. Kyosuke, I'm sorry. We were so poor, that was almost a joke. No one ever even believed that such a family still existed in Japan in this day and age. When my teacher came to my home for a house visit and saw the rundown state of my room, she tried to make me feel better. Kyosuke, even though it's hard right now, spring will definitely come. Listen, there's no such thing as a discrepancy between higher and lower people. Didn't you hear that in class? So there's no need to feel ashamed. Fine. I'll give that poor woman the benefit of the doubt and assume that there's no high nor low. No matter your perspective, though, there will always be a left and right. On my left, a spoiled boy was wolfing down his steak. On my right, a timid, bullied girl was able at least to find a place in her comfortable room at home, where she was allowed a clean shower with warm water. Why did other parents laugh and joke, never apologizing once to the rest of the world, when Mum was always bowing to the others with a grim expression? And though they never reacted to other children, I realized as I grew in years, in the eye of the township's kind elderly ladies had borne pity, and thus contempt, for me. All of this, because we had no money. If you don't have money, You'll have to submit to others when you shouldn't have to. You'll be suspected, even though you didn't do anything. You'll become the subject of pity without even noticing. 
the two greatest gifts poor weak people can be bestowed with are the endurance of livestock and the servility of a slave. If that wasn't the case, then why would Mom, a woman who had continually preached to me about not hurting the weak, allow herself to be tortured like that? Ellipses. In my dreams, I remember that I still carry my father's immense debt, and I watched myself be crushed to death by the weight of the money. Ellipses. 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 Megalipses. Kuskakun. Sabaki shook my shoulders. A groan escaped my lips as I slowly sat up. What's wrong? You look like you had a nightmare. Why am I here? Excuse me? Why am I in this rundown shack? I should be in my penthouse. <laughs> You're not awake yet, are you? My eyes focused on Sabaki's face. Right. Sorry. Good morning. Did I say something insulting just now? I'm sorry I live in a run-down shack. <sighs> Sabaki seemed to be happy, as she still had a smile on her face. Sorry. What should we do today? Hmm. Wanna go out? Okay. I have to think of a way to convince her to move. Do you want to go for a walk? Sure. Let's go after everyone's done eating. Hey, can I come too? Nope, but we'll bring you a present when we get back. Really? Hooray! Being kind to Hiroaki is a prerequisite to any plan involving the Miwas. Because he's a spoiled little brat. Then I want a game, a game! Cool, got it. Yusuke come. you don't have to. Hiroaki, don't bug him about these things. After that, we left her complaining brother and made our way toward the streets. Being a day off, Central Boulevard was packed to the brim with couples. Is this really okay? Aren't you busy? Don't worry about it. All I want to hear from you right now is a hint as to what you'd like. Huh? We've been going out for 10 days now, so I want to get you something for commemoration. The all-important 10-day anniversary. Thank you. She made a face. But... Are you sure? What? Isn't it normal to give gifts to your girlfriend? Oh, is it? I wouldn't know. I've never gone out with anyone before. Like I said, don't worry about it. What do you want? Uh, um... Sabaki was nonplussed. Anything is fine. Then, how about a hoopla set? What kind of hoopla set? W what kind? Just a hoopla set. The kind in party games. Ellipses. Was that a bad choice? Well, it was certainly a... Sabaki choice. No, no, no. But why do you want something like that? I always thought, um, it might be fun playing that game with everyone. Definitely a Subaki choice. <sighs> I've wanted one ever since I was small, you know? Ah, uh, yeah. I really don't know what to say. Um, I think the gifts a guy usually gets his girlfriend are more like purses and necklaces or watches. You know, things like that. Who wants a shiny bit of metal when you can have something that you can have fun with? Is that so? Isn't this supposed to be a gift especially for you? If we get something for everybody to enjoy... So it was a bad choice after all? I'm not saying I won't get it for you. I think it would make Mom, Dad, Hiroaki, the whole family happy. Hmm. I guess what I'm trying to say is that you should think of something more for yourself. Oh, here's a better way to put it. Normally a gift with meaning should be something that makes you specifically happy. Something tells me this is only to get more and more confusing. If everyone's happy, then I'm happy. I saw that one coming. 
You know, this whole sweet as sugar thing is getting to be pretty questionable. Oh? I get it. Let's go to the department store. Now that I think about it, will they even carry hoopla sets? Two hours later. It's just as I suspected. No matter how many stores we checked, not a single one had the product we were looking for. Too bad. I guess it just can't be helped. Of course. We wouldn't still be looking for it if you wanted something better. Better? Something expensive. Girls are supposed to flaunt their Christmas presents to each other to show off how much they're loved. <laughs> you sure know a lot. No, babe. That's not what it is. Kyosuke kun do you give a lot of gifts to people? She asks gingerly. Hmm? I guess what I'm asking is, do you go out with a lot of girls before me? Oh? I was wondering if you cared about things like that. Of course I do. I'm a bit relieved, honestly. Surprised furrowed Sabaki's brow. Let's grab some lunch. Uh, you never answered me properly. Ellipses. Ellipses. Question dodged. Hmm. Sabaki resembled a child as we walked along the streets. She got excited about every little thing. Look, look, the light takes so long to turn green. Modern traffic lights are really intelligent. I hear they calculate relative traffic volumes and change the timing accordingly. Eh, that's amazing. Sometime later, we stopped at a street-side stall selling accessories. Mostly cool. These watches are so much cheaper than the ones at the department store. I whispered into her ear. They're all fakes. Don't be fooled into buying them. Huh? Fakes? Why would anyone sell something like that? That's just too cruel. It's not cruel. The customers buying them usually know they're fakes when they buy them. But some people will be tricked. This is bad. It's fraud. Welcome to the market, honey. I don't know whether or not it's bad, but the stall owner isn't trying to trick us. At least, he's not trying to sell fakes as the real thing, so it's not really the fraud. Mmm, that's really complicated. Anyway, if you don't see anything you particularly like, you should avoid buying anything. Although, to avoid a misunderstanding, I should point out that sometimes they do have the real deal. You might come across a great deal on a beautiful handmade necklace or something. Eh? I didn't know that. Ellipses. As we wandered casually along the streets near the shopping center, Sabaki stopped again. This time, we found ourselves situated before a group that was addressing the street. Every member was wearing pure white clothes, handing pamphlets to passerbys. Hey, Sabaki, we're going. Uh, sure, sure. But, Kyosuke-kun, aren't you interested in these kinds of things? Not in the least. Giving it a quick listen, the sermon was about scandals related to political and economic figures. Supposedly, there are too many people obstructing their salvation. If only everyone could be equal. Yes, if only. It's called communism. It doesn't work. If only everyone could be happy. Yeah, that would be wonderful. Losing what remained of my interest, I left hastily. Looks like you get brainwashed too easily. Huh? Ellipses. Ellipses. Yes, then excuse me. It's noon, and I'm being rushed by continuous phone calls. Whew, <sighs> sorry. This is just like last time, isn't it? It's fine, it's fine. Since we're going out, please try to put up with it. Mid-sigh, another call came. Sorry. Sabaki held out her hand in a go-ahead pose. Ah, hey. What's up, Miki-chan? Yeah... Ellipses. <laughs> great job. You're a great help. Right, right. Then what? Ellipses. 
I kept on chatting about meaningless stuff with Miki-chan. When the call ended, Sabaki asked me politely, Uh, um, who was that? An acquaintance from work. Right, I mean, of course. Since you said Miki-chan, though, I was wondering who it was. Is it a girl? <laughs> Don't worry about that. The next call came when we'd gone downtown, thinking of eating at a western restaurant. When I noticed the caller, my mood suddenly became heavier. Again? Hello, what is it? How many times will I have to set Tsubaki aside? This looks like it's going to be another long one. I apologize to Sabaki with pleading eyes once more. Ellipses. Megalipses. I already told you, I understand. Yes, I'm starting to feel exhausted. I casually hold the cell phone with one hand while I trudge up and down the street. Ellipses. Sabaki seems to feel that something is out of place. She has been staring at me for a while now. I have to pick a good time and end the call. Then, uh. Ugh. A dull impact to my shoulder. My restless pacing has managed to crash me right into a pedestrian. Kyosuke kun, your cell phone. The phone had slipped out of my hand and landed near Sabaki's feet. She picked it up. Ah, Sabaki didn't have any bad intentions, but she couldn't help but hear the screams of anger coming from the receiver. Uh, eh? Sabaki froze. Hey, why aren't you here with me? Hey, when are you coming back? Answer me. Answer me. Ellipses. Ellipses. Even though I've grown accustomed to hearing this insane voice of pure hysteria, it must have come as a shock to Sabaki. Terrified, Sabaki passed the phone back to me. This is too much. This is too much. Don't, don't leave me here like this. Do you hate me? Do you? Do you hate me? Well, oh, I'd hate you too, Jesus Christ. A woman's voice. One always full of resentment and sadness. Who, who is that? That woman? She... She's so scary. Just... just who is she? That couldn't possibly be one of your friends, could it? No, she's not a friend. Tsubaki must be so scared that she's panicking. I can't blame her. Uh, um, is she a girl you used to date, or, or something? I immediately hung up. Uh, uh, um, I don't mind. I mean, after all, you're really handsome and really popular with the girls, so, uh, no matter what happened, I don't mind at all. Looks like she thinks I have a vengeful ex. Sounds more like incredibly desperate and slightly violent. In order to calm Sabaki down, I pressed her against a wall. Don't make such a fuss. It's not like that at all. No. My threatening glare made Sabaki even more tense. But she was really scary. She seemed almost out of her mind. Out of her mind? Uh... -uh. All my strength, with nowhere to go, concentrated in my arm. Sorry. Oopsies. That was... Mom. Oh! That explains some things. Huh? I said that was my mother. Sabaki was dumbfounded. Her face screamed disbelief. A person who grew up in such a happy environment would never believe that such a mother exists in this world. Oh, honey. Mom went through a lot, so she's... just a bit more talkative than she used to be. That's all. Oopsies. 
She's a bit lonely, I suppose. I'm with my foster father and living far away from her. She's just a bit tired, okay? It's all my fault. Mum was reduced to this because I was poor and weak. At that precise moment, I suddenly woke up. A breath escaped my lips, like waking up from a nightmare. What am I doing? Subaki's eyes. I felt that stare many times before. That stare filled with obnoxious, worthless affection. Sympathy. Sorry. I didn't know. Yeah, I didn't mention it. It couldn't be helped. The words that slipped out of my mouth hardly contradicted the raging emotions inside my heart. In the depths of my being, ugly and distorted darkness moved restlessly, accumulating, gathering. The truth is, it was a shock to me. I didn't want Sabaki to know. I had believed that even if she did find out, Sabaki, that kind Sabaki, would not pity me. My belief in her was something purely of my own creation, and thus the betrayal I felt at having my expectations violated was no different. It's quite childish, I know, but Sabaki isn't much better. In the end, even though Sabaki says she wants the whole world to be happy, when it comes to a person like me, she has no idea what she should do. There is no way she could possibly understand. Pity is the one thing we do not want. The best cure for our pitiful hearts is the superiority one feels when one has money and power. Shouldn't I be telling her that? I'm so sorry. Kyosuke kun please don't be so sad. Ellipses. I just... I just don't know what I should say in a situation like this. Sabaki didn't know what to do. She hesitated for a while, blinked a few times, and finally thought of what she wanted to say. Oh yeah, um... Despite all that, I'm still at your side, right, Kyosuke-kun? Even if I'm not much use, my whole family is with you. Everyone is at your side. Every panicky sentence, every word, provoked the nerves in my ears. All the feelings I held for Tsubaki until now, like a flipped card, suddenly faced a different direction. Right. Thank you. I gently lowered my head. Hundreds of times, thousands of times, I forced myself to bow to others. But this time, for some reason, is unbelievably vivid in my memory. Slowly, Sabaki cradled my head with her hands. Kyosuke kun. I love you. I love you too. There's no question that I've fallen for her. Sabaki has filled my heart. And you're not useless. Really? I'm happy to hear that. Yeah. Hidden by my bangs, I closed my eyes. I've decided. I'll let you be of use to me. Ellipses. Megalipses. Wandering through the central district until nightfall, I brought Tsubaki to my apartment. She had originally wanted to go home, but obediently agreed to stay after I asked her. The moment I took off my jacket, I pulled her into my embrace. Sabaki was surprised, and her body stiffened, but that was only for a moment. She immediately started making fawning noises and leaned toward me without a scintilla of doubt. Once again, those crazy kids are at it. And once again, I have to cut it for YouTube. Sorry, but... I don't want to come up against uh, YouTube's community standards and get myself banned. 
That would make me a sad panda. After we were finished, I whispered into Sabaki's ear. That was sudden. Were you scared? Not really. Well, just a little, just a bit. Her cheeks were red from embarrassment, but her expression was relaxed. You didn't dislike it, though, right? I trust you. Anything you do is okay. Without thinking twice, she threw out a proclamation that made my neck itch. The obedient Sabaki. I don't know why, but she fell for me. The only reason she can follow me and spill out her heart like this must be that she only saw the school me. There's a question I want to ask you. What is it? After everything, did you end up contacting the police? The police? Are you talking about the kidnapping incident? I nodded. No, I didn't. Do you think I should? I'm a bit scared. Will you ever forgive the kidnapper? Huh? Do you hate the kidnapper? Sabaki went silent, and her eyes wandered away from me. I don't know. To tell you the truth, I don't think you did something so unforgivable. You're too good of a person. In that case, it'd be better if the police weren't involved. If the police come, there'd be a whole horde of interrogations, and your family would be unstable again. And I don't think this guy is someone who would be caught so easily, either. Right. Dad hasn't brought it up much, either. Well then, let's go into the main topic now. If anything happens from now on, you have to remember to contact me. Of course. I'd do that anyway. You wouldn't want to bug the police with some insignificant thing and have them dig up the kidnapping incident, would you? Insignificant thing? Yeah, for instance. Well, has your father mentioned anything about calling the police recently? Oh. Mm? Sabaki wrinkled her forehead. Well, he said something about it when those people came trying to drive us out. A bunch of strangers showed up and got Dad pretty worried. So your father really was thinking about calling the police? I don't know, maybe. If he decides that's what he'll do, you'll have to stall him long enough for me to get there. You're right. The kidnapper might still be watching us from somewhere. If we alert the police about every little thing, he might get angry. Sabaki suddenly became scared. I felt content for the moment. She had no suspicion over what I said. Things are going to get busy from tomorrow on, so I might not be able to go to school. Oh. We won't be able to see each other? We will. I'll just come over in the evening. Oh, good. I have to start the final preparations tomorrow. There's no time to think things over and to be picky here. I'll have to use dirty, violent methods and force them to move out. Gonzo's people will be on the outside, and I'll be on the inside. For that, I must make Sabaki my possession. I flashed a false smile. Oh yeah, aren't you the class representative? What does that mean? Nothing. It just looks like a really tough role. It's not that bad. How about you give it up? Why? No particular reason. Just, don't you think you've wasted enough time on useless things like that? I guess. Weren't you the class representative the past couple of years, too? People usually hate the job. Sabaki just laughed. But someone has to do it. Resign. I spoke sharply. I want you to be with me more and more from today on. Ah. Once again, she snuggled into my embrace. I think I understand how a gigolo feels. I need some help from you for my job, but more importantly, I want to be able to spend more quality time with you. Uh, Alright. 
even though she's still hesitant, she smiled weakly. Alright, I'll stop volunteering to do the job. Really? Thanks, and, uh, sorry. It's fine. Like I said, I trust you. Her mouth may be saying that, but her heart must be wavering. I'll corrupt you, little by little, Subaki. Okay, let's call it quits for today. I'll bring you home. Subaki latched onto my arm happily. The wind was quite strong as we made our way back. We walked closer than usual, and I walked her right to her doorstep. The sound of a family floated out the moment we opened the door. Such things are wonderful. Isn't simply having a home and family good enough for a person to be happy? How bad can it be to move a few miles down the road? On the way back, I called a taxi, which was extremely rare for me. In the back seat of the vehicle, I took out my cell. I made the necessary calls to orchestrate the harassment of Sabaki's family tomorrow. <laughs>